Hey, 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 low energy boy, Game Bro Corey, coming at you live on another podcast. We're not starting it yet. I got to ramble for a little bit before we do that. That That is the way. It is set in the Ten Commandments. Start, Just start rambling, then do the podcast. I believe that's commandment three or four. Um, Yeah, so what did I do last week? Uh, well, first of all, let me just iterate to all y'all listening how important it is to get a proper night's sleep. I bet you didn't expect this on the Level With Me podcast, some actual health benefits and facts. But uh, I would say the past couple of weeks, if not months, I've been kind of like not been in a great like mindset. I've been kind of like depressed and sad. I, I guess that's the same thing. Um, lack of energy. I, I don't know, like not really being able to focus. And uh, on Monday night, I ended up going to bed at like 9 a.m. Well, it doesn't matter when I went to sleep. The point is I got about eight hours, if not more than eight hours of sleep. And I felt fucking great. I felt so good the following day. And it really, really impacted me. And it made me go, hey, I really need to focus on getting enough sleep. And, you know, just be getting my life, making my life better, I guess. You know? I was just so surprised how much just a good night's rest made me feel in the morning. Like, usually when I go to work, I'm a little tired. I'm kind of groggy. I don't really want to interact with anyone. But after those eight hours when I woke up, I'm like, I'm I'm ready to go. And I was in, like, a good mood. I was smiling, saying hi to a lot of people, like, actually talking to them. Like, it, it's crazy how much just a lot of sleep makes you feel completely different. So, uh, yeah, I want to try to focus on my sleep and get a a good night's sleep because in the past few months I've probably been getting around maybe six if not a little under six or maybe a little bit over six but I need to try to uh just just get better sleep overall try to get about seven to eight hours if I can and really uh maximize my sleep on the weekends I, I feel like on the weekends I'll tend to wake up kind of early even if I go to bed late and just be like, well, I'm up. I might as well just do stuff. I don't want to waste the weekend. But I feel like now I want to try to just make sure I get enough sleep before I start my weekend off. Although this weekend might be a little bit different because I plan on going to Philly. So I might wake up early to get down there early. I don't know. Me and my girlfriend will figure it out. We're going to Philly this weekend. So that'll be fun. I want to see a flower show. Very exciting. Seeing all the flowers. That's it, I guess. I honestly, I think it'll be pretty interesting. I mean, I'm not going to lie, even though I'm a man, I I do enjoy nice, pleasant smelling things. And uh, I do like nature. So it will be cool to see the different species of flowers. There were a lot of like other little side events at this uh, flower show. It's just a shame they all cost additional like, you know, money. Like none of them, there's like nothing included besides, I guess, just whatever the flower show is itself, which I assume is going to be a bunch of different species of flowers on display all around and maybe like little things that explain, you know, oh, this is uh, this kind of lavender. Oh, this is this kind of tulip, you know. But then there's like a butterfly garden. I think you can like make your own little stuff. And I mean, I get all that because at the end of the day, the when you make your own little like potted plant or whatever, you know, you got to pay somehow to get that stuff. They can't just give that away for free. And even for the butterflies, they have to pretty much pay to essentially keep them there. And who knows? Like, I'm sure some of them are going to get smushed by other people because we're all stupid. Uh, so, yeah, like, I'm not I'm not trying to be like, oh, I deserve something like that. I just kind of wish, like, some of that stuff was more included with the, the administration. I mean, I don't think it was that much. I, I forget how much the tickets were. Maybe, like, 25 or 30 bucks. But I also don't know how big it is. It could be... Huge, huge, huge. I, I, I have no idea yet. Uh, regardless, I think it should smell at least nicer than Philadelphia itself. Because uh, there's a lot of urine and feces on those streets. Probably probably a lot more other goodness. <laughs> oh, man. I can't count how many times I've been... I can count how many times I've been to Philly and it smells good. It's probably zero. Speaking of uh, people being stupid animals, uh, sorry, I just got a Snapchat. It's very important I check that. Could be 
could be my girl, Megan. I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm a stupid animal. I see my phone vibrate or, well, I hear it vibrate and I see it flash. And I'm like, ooh, shiny thing. But this loops around to what I was going to say. So don't worry. I'm not losing focus. So the other day at the intersection by where my girlfriend works, apparently there was a truck on fire and she was like uh, actually sending me a Snapchat. Look at that. It did go full circle. She sent me a bunch of videos of people like just being astounded by this car smoking and being on fire as people are driving past. And there are all these people like in each part of the inner or both sides of the intersection all recording it and watching it. And I was just like laughing as I'm watching this because I'm like, that's just basic human instinct. We're just like, oh, thing on fire. Oh, very interesting. Oh, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? Like, we just all love seeing like things on fire. Like, that's such an animal instinct inside all of us that we're like, whoa, look at that. You don't see that every day. (laughs) And I don't know. That just made me laugh. Like, it's just such a basic thing. Like, oh, there's a fire over there. Look at that. That's like, that's been ingrained in our brains for millions of years that we see the smoke and a little bit of the flames and we're like, oh, there's something interesting over there. I need to go check that out. You you know what I mean? Like, that stuff always cracks me up. I, I just love, like, just thinking about, like, basic instinct things that have just been ingrained in us. Like, whenever we see a spider or snake, we're, like, scared because at some point in our lifetime someone got bit by a snake or bit by a spider and probably died. And we just know now, like through instincts, like, Ooh, be scared of those things. Those things bite and hurt you. Uh, I, I find that stuff funny. I don't know why I'm weird. Uh, so speaking of me being weird, I, why do I need to make everything a segue? I, uh, I was just out with my girlfriend. I think it was on Friday and we got a delicious meal at Popeye's. And uh, I went to go buy some more food because I'm a fat ass. And lo and behold, my card, my debit card just stopped working. And I'm like, oh boy. Because I'm going to be honest with you guys. A little bit around December, I actually overcharged my debit card. And I was like, you know, like I didn't have any money in there. And I got really, really scared. And that really like altered my brain where I'm like, now I need to save a lot of money. Which is probably why I haven't well, I haven't been like going anywhere or not buying as much stuff because I'm trying to save, save, save because I never want that to happen because I hated that feeling. So the second I put my card in and it declined, I'm just like, oh my God, was I not like taking care of my money? And I just got my tax return too a couple weeks. So I'm like, what the hell happened? Like I didn't even spend that much money. And and then I get a call from a number I don't recognize. So I just declined it immediately. And then I was freaking out. I was telling my girlfriend and she's like, oh, check your bet bank account and i do and there it is proof in the pudding there are three or four charges on playstation network all the first one was like 10 the second one was like 20 and i think the last one was like 70 i'm like uh that that's not me so i i recalled that number that called me and it was a fraud protection service and they're like hey uh what you know i gave them my information and they're like oh are these were these purchases you and they even mentioned Popeyes. I'm like, the Popeyes, yes. The PlayStation, no. And uh, they essentially just, you know, canceled my card and have to send me out a new one. But it's such a weird thing for me right now because I almost, like, don't have any money. And it's a good thing and a bad thing because I don't go out there and spend random bullshit money on things I don't really need. Uh, but I'm also kind of like, I, I can't, like, do that much stuff. Like, I I, I can... I can uh, purchase things. I have my credit card that I've been using, but I haven't been purchasing a lot. Like I bought groceries one day and then I bought gas the other day, but I'm not buying just like, Oh, let's go get a new video game. Oh, let's go get this or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But you know, it's just so weird without having my like debit card. Like that's just essentially my money. And that's, you know, it's again, it's funny too. Cause it's like this piece of plastic is my life essentially. Also, it's going to be fun for me having to go through all my bills and change my credit or debit card to this new one. And uh, I so I don't have to panic and be like, oh, did I forget to change it? Oh, no. Are they going to cut off my Internet or am I going to get evicted? <laughs> Luckily for my rent, I do pay a check, though. But, yeah, that's going to be a fun time. I'm going to have hopefully I get my new debit card soon. Also, I owe people at my work uh, money, not because I. I don't, like, generally take money from people like, oh, can you lend me, like, five bucks? I've got to get a soda. 
I don't do that. Um, it's for like a fundraiser thing, and I bought some popcorn because uh, this lady's daughter is uh, doing some fundraiser, and I'm like, oh, I fucking love popcorn. So now I feel bad that I haven't given her the money because I'm like, oh, I'll give it to you by last Friday or Saturday, and then all this shit happened. Uh, but luckily, I explained it to her today, and she's very understanding. She actually said she had fraud happen like four times just last year, and I'm like, oof. Uh, she is a boomer, though, so, you know, I guess more egg on my face because I'm a millennial. I should be very aware of people being able to hack, especially PlayStation. I was just scratching my head. I'm like, what did they even buy, like V-Bucks? I, I don't know. I had to go through and change all my PlayStation stuff, too. Uh, you know, just... Just common knowledge, if anything like that ever happens, go change everything. Just do a mass change, you know. You can't be, you can never be too safe. So that's been fun. Uh, also, I wanted to address my lack of streaming lately. I think the last time I streamed was last Tuesday or Wednesday. And I was streaming a lot of Call of Duty Modern Warfare. And uh, first of all, I want to say if any of you watched that, the quality wasn't that great. I, I still wanted to tweak around with that a little bit more and try to get that right. But who knows when I'll be tweaking around with that because I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm kind of not like loving streaming anymore. I, I don't really enjoy it. I feel like it's kind of wasting my time a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Like I, I kind of get like you have to keep grinding away at streaming to build a fan base. But I, I don't know, just I, I haven't really been enjoying it recently. So I'm kind of thinking of doing something else with my time. And I was actually feeling really inspired today, not only about making the YouTube content that I've been talking about for months now, uh, but even working on other projects. Like I was considering writing a book or even uh, working on a video game and using like some sort of game software to make like a small game myself. So I don't know. I have big ideas and... As much as I like the idea of being a streamer, I don't think that that's my future. It might be something that I do while I'm doing all my other stuff. Like, I don't want to give up on the podcast. I was thinking about that, but now that i am got more sleep and got a clearer mind, I definitely don't want to lose this. I would like to make my YouTube series. I have ideas on that. I would like to actually start writing, like, a script for that and planning, like, what to do about that. Um, and, yeah, maybe... Like I said, write a book. I have ideas for that. Maybe make a game. I was even thinking about doing uh, written video game articles, like uh, just about uh, video game culture itself or new games coming out or reviews, like stuff like that. I just don't know where I would put that kind of stuff, but I enjoy writing. So I am I might be looking into doing more of that. So I don't know if you'll see as many streams. And I don't, I don't really know honestly, if you can even trust this, because I'm kind of spontaneous. Like, next week, I might be like, oh, I'm streaming every day, but yeah, I don't know. I'm, like, in a weird, like, space right now. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out, like, what I want to do with my content. I, I I feel like I would really enjoy making YouTube content. I just need to actually sit down and do the work. It's hard for me to not, like, get distracted while I'm making my crap, trying to make my craft if I want to, like, do something else. Like, you know, I'll sit in front of my desk and be like, okay, I should write down my script, but I'll end up just watching Twitch or playing a video game or something like that. I really need to focus. And it's a shame because I always get these ideas when I'm at work. That That's just how it goes, right? Like when I'm doing something I don't want to be doing, I get all these great ideas. Like I'm like, oh, I could do this. I could do that, blah, 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 blah. And it's like when I come home, then I'm like pretty much exhausted because I also went to the gym after work and I'm just like so beat. I'm like, well, now all I really want to do is relax. Either watch something whether that be a series or twitch or just play something and kind of just shut my brain off for a little bit so yeah i'm gonna try to figure out what my next step is here uh I'm really interested in this youtube uh idea also a couple months ago i think i might have mentioned on the podcast but i bought a nice like camera and like tripod and lighting equipment and i feel like i've just done nothing with it literally spent probably about like 500 bucks on it i mean i put it on my one of my credit cards but i was just i keep like getting like frustrated in my head i'm like oh come on you got to do something with that Corey. don't just let that sit there so i feel like i would like to do stuff like that also just speaking of that like i was just looking at my webcams and stuff and i don't know i'd even i might even change up how my stream is and maybe go no webcam for the streams i I don't know. I, I'm not going to change like my logo or anything like that again because I feel like I've done that enough. But 
I just might change how my streams will be in the future when I start streaming. Because I'm going to be honest, I'm also like a little like awkward. And I thought like streaming would help me. But I, I'm honestly just not great at like focusing on a game and also like trying to entertain people like in the chat. And I was trying to have my stream more or less be like, hey, look at the quality of my gameplay. I'm pretty good at whatever I'm playing, whether it be Smash or Call of Duty or whatever. And I was hoping that people would enjoy that and then I would kind of chime in here or there. But from how my streams have been going, like generally one person will pop in at a time and I kind of almost just want to try to entertain them. And sometimes they stay, sometimes they don't. I don't know. I assume that's just the process of Twitch and it's just also being consistent. I mean, I really never had a Twitch schedule. I've been thinking about that a lot. But if I would try to stream again, I really would like to try to make a consistent schedule so people would actually know when to come over and trying. And I think that would help me like actually want to stream more. Uh, but but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm going to figure it out as I go on. You know, I'm kind of spontaneous. I need to kind of just set my uh, put some. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Guidance on my uh Work outside of work, I guess. My lucrative, it, not lucrative, I don't know what word I'm looking for. There's a million words in my brain right now, and I'm thinking about a million other things. So why don't we just continue on with the podcast as it goes on now? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Level With Me Podcast, episode 38. I am here, Game Bro Corey, and we are going to have a great podcast. Don't you think? Huh, guys? Oh my god. Why does this always happen? I do a podcast and I get like super like tired. I feel like it's something about staring at the screens that really messes me up because like I wasn't really like too tired before. I maybe it's just even sitting here and my the atmosphere of my room I'm in right now. I, I mean, I'm wearing a hoodie. I I'm pretty much fully clothed like how I what I wore today to work. I, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily comfy, but I don't know. Like I just feel like I'm Maybe I'm just running out of breath, too, because I've been talking for almost 20 minutes straight now. Who knows? Who knows? But, yeah, we are we got another podcast for you here. Uh, I pretty much gave you guys my week. I didn't really do anything else in particular. Um, oh, I also want to, like, talk about, like, uh, maybe I'll save that for, I don't know. I, I was just going to mention, like, Smash tournaments. And I kind of want to keep doing that, but I, I don't know. Like, it'll, it'll depend, like. It's just like I, I feel like I just have so many ideas of things I want to do and I should probably only do like one or two of them. And yet there's like six things. That I'm like, ooh, I want to do this. Ooh, I want to do that. I even was thinking about like just getting like a sketchbook and start drawing again because I actually really liked drawing when I was younger and I'd like to try to get back into it and just see where it goes. Whether that's drawing literally just a photocopy, like just looking at a picture and trying to like completely copy it or just do some abstract shit. I don't know. But I'm considering doing that, too. Uh, yes, but content must continue. Uh, again, I didn't really didn't really do anything this weekend. I had to had, I had some overtime, so I worked on Saturday. My weekends have been pretty lax, and I didn't even really get to, like, play or watch much stuff. I'll, I'll get on to that once we get into what I did or what I played and watched later on. But, yeah, my, my weekend was pretty, like, nothing. I've honestly, like, been pretty, like, busy the past couple of days that's one of the reasons this podcast is also kind of delayed like uh i i really haven't been doing like a lot i've been just like busy you know like i didn't really get to watch too much stuff or play games these past couple of days and it, it kind of bums me out but uh you know it's just life like some weeks are busy some weeks you get to actually spend a lot of free time and uh also like I just feel like my apartment has been like a little cluttered and I've been trying to like clean it up the best I can. I say that as I have a pile of laundry that's just been sitting on the floor for about a week right next to me. Uh, I should probably fold that after this podcast. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. We'll find out soon. All right. Let's talk about dud news. So right off the back, right off the back, it's right off the, is it right off the back or right off the bat? I think it's right off the bat. What words, phrases? I'm so stupid. Why do you guys listen to me? <laughs> uh, here's your first story. Let's go with that. This is from GameSpot. McDonald's to sell burger-scented candles. Isn't that what we all wanted? Oh, delicious, delicious. Is this real? 
McDonald's will sell limited edition six pack of candles that smell like quarter pounder ingredients. Ketchup, pickled cheese, onion, and beef. Ew. No, these are a joke, right? Let's read the article. If you've ever felt a sense of longing with the mouth-watering scent of burgers fades after you finish your food, these scent, these candles have you covered. McDonald's has announced that it's selling a set of candles that are made to smell like the ingredients from the Quarter Pounder burger. Yes, seriously. these There are six candles in total, including a beef-scented candle as well as onion, pickle, cheese, sesame bun, and ketchup candles. Essentially, if you're a really, really big fan of the Quarter Pounder, if you just have a strong desire for your home to smell like onion or cheese, these candles are for you. Are you fucking kidding me? (laughs) Okay, so first of all, when I saw this article, I thought it was just one candle that smelled like a McDonald's burger, and I, I was like, I don't even know how they do that. The fact that it's six candles and they're each the ingredients is fucking disgusting. Who in their right mind wants a fucking onion or ketchup or cheese? Can- that is disgusting. I hate that. I hate this so much. Oh, this is giving me chills. That is disgusting. I really don't like that. I Okay. All right. So you, we got to do the joke. You got to pick one, right? Oh, my God. Where are they? Stupid Twitter. I, I tried to click the link. I want to look at them. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay. So there are six. There's sesame seed bun. There's ketchup. There's onions. There's 100% fresh beef. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that one, McDonald's. I bet that candle's made out of whatever that 100% real beef is made out of. Uh, there's pickles and there's cheese. I got to pick one of these. I, I think I got to pick the season or the sesame seed bun because I feel like that one probably would smell decent. I would think it might smell like fresh ba- fresh baked bread. Maybe the beef one? No, that'd be gross. No, it it has to be the sesame one. I literally don't have a good, like, runner-up here. Maybe, no. It'd probably either be the beef or cheese, but, ugh. That's, That's disgusting. I'd rather take the vagina candle. Fuck that. Oh, God. I'd rather eat those candles. Just, just make a burger out of those candles, and I'll order that and just eat it. Uh... Yeah, where do we go from disgusting McDonald's candles? Obviously, Animal Crossing, right? Uh, So, I think it was about a week ago there was Animal Crossing Direct, and a ton of news came out from that. Well, actually, not that much news. Uh, Sorry, it's been a week, but that was a a weird Direct. I caught, like, the tail end of it because it was during my uh, uh, lunch break or something. It, It was, like, while all the Nintendo Directs always happen while I'm at work, and I'm like, guys... I hate this. You're going to get me fired because I go out on my... I go out to the bathroom to try to sneak a little peek at these videos. Like, oh, what's happening? There have been multiple times where I have been super late back from my break watching, like, Smash Directs and stuff. It, it's bad. So, Nintendo, just just make them a better time. Like, make them, like, 6 p.m. or something like that. Like, try to work. I, I know time zones are weird, but it just... It's real bad. But yeah, this this Direct was really odd. I feel like they didn't really show off too, too much new. It was almost like a refresher and just little things here or there. Um, do I have a, actually a news story of the one, the biggest news? Okay. It, it's surprisingly not here. I thought I pulled up the story, but yo, who the fuck's dead on that island? We all saw that tombstone. Someone's fucking dead. Who is it? <laughs> There was an article, was it on Kotaku or IGN? Maybe it was GameSpot. Someone made an article about who that who they think that did. I just love the idea that they're, the villagers could die at Animal Crossing or the, the townspeople. Like, that's so sad. Oh, my God. That And the island seems small, so it's like, why don't you even put a body on there? Like, Jesus, send it out to sea at least. Do, like, the Viking to a uh, burial where they like put them on a raft and like light on fire <laughs> oh god that's one way to attract sharks um let's let's read the art i have a couple articles here so this one this one was actually the thing that was a little controversial about this direct animal crossing new horizon save recovery limit may be uh, open to change um, so during the Animal Crossing Focus Direct, Nintendo once again confirmed that the upcoming New Horizons will not make use of Nintendo Switch Online's cloud save backup function, but NSO subscribers will have a way to recover their save data should something unfortunate happen to their system. 
However, this feature comes with one notable caveat. The caveat that previously stated that players would only be able to recover data once in the event of a Switch console was damage or loss resulted in some criticism from the community and became a key subject of discussion about the game. In the time since Nintendo has re-uploaded the re-uploaded the Animal Crossing New Horizon Direct video, sacrificing a considerable number of views in the process, and changed the language used in the data recovery section to indicate it may be reconsidered reconsidering the lim limitation. So again, basically what happened is in the original Direct, there was this slide that said that the, uh, here, in case of a defective or lost console, more details on save, hang on, this is the wrong slide. But it essentially said that you could only do this once. So you could essentially only recover your Animal Crossing New Horizons, like, island data once. And everyone freaked out about that. Which, I guess the internet, they're going to freak out about anything. Uh, but it is kind of something considerable. Like, I, it's very odd to me that this is something that they don't want to use on the cloud. I think it just might be because it might allow people to easily manipulate the items and spawn infinite bells or infinite froggy chairs or whatever. Um, but I, I don't like, it's, it's just animal crossing. Like, does it really matter that much? Like I could see it a little bit in Pokemon sword and shield where there is a competitive aspect to that game, but literally like, well, what's the point dude, especially with all the things that they added to this, like you can change the Island you're literally God, and you can add dirt or remove dirt or make water. That shit's dope. But yet, you just you can't you can't just have a cloud. Like I don't. It it just makes me scratch my head. Like Nintendo, why, why? It's like what what? This is why we wanted the cloud saves to begin with, and it's like oh well, half the games don't even support the cloud save. It's like, come on, guys, what what are we doing here? Uh, so yes, I also mentioned. Uh, you'll be able to customize your whole island's terrain at some point. That's really cool. I think there's actually... Oh, here we go. There's an article I'm going to get into later about other quality of life features. I know you can have, like, double the items that you can hold, and I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons will also have free updates for holidays and events. Uh, and those will be integrated throughout time. Like, there'll be announcements about them. I believe the first one is on... It's on March 20th when the game's released, and it's Bunny Day, which I assume is like an Easter-themed event. They showed all the different, like, carrot, animal, towns, folk who come for the holidays. Uh, can you guys tell that I'm not really, like, I don't know that much about Animal Crossing, but I like Animal Crossing? I only really played one. I played uh, City Folk or whatever the one on the Wii is, but I did like it a lot. I'm very worried, though, that I'm not going to be able to put a lot of hours into this one. Because my girlfriend is obsessed with Animal Crossing. And I know she really, really, really wants to play New Horizons. And she literally is even considering getting her own Switch. And I'm like, no, 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 don't do not do that. It's fine. You can just play mine. But, you know, it, it would be nice if we each had our own. But at the same time, there's, there's co-op in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Like, we could both play at the same time together. Like, well, it'll probably all work out. Plus, there's... March is full of games for me. There's Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, Neo 2, uh, Doom Eternal. I I got plenty of stuff to play, you know. Let's read some of the other big quality of life features. Uh, perhaps the most notable addition is an unlockable tool wheel. Much like a weapon wheel in shooters, the tool wheel makes it easier to quickly switch between all the tools in your inventory, such as the shovel, fishing rod, and axe. In previous Animal Crossing games, you'd have to either go into your inventory and manually equip the tool or cycle through all your tools using the D-pad until you got to the one you wanted. So that's nice. Uh, New Horizons also has a rescue service, which you can call whenever you're stuck or lost or too lazy to walk back home. For a cost, the service will help you get back home in a pinch. And based on the music that plays when you call it, it seems like Mr. Rossetti is involved somehow. The storage system has also been reworked. Instead of having to manually put away each individual item into a cabinet, New Horizons allows you from anywhere. Wait, uh, New Horizons allows you from anywhere inside your home to quickly put furniture into storage. Moving furniture around is just faster too. Okay, so it, yeah, it's just like nice quality of life stuff. And uh, this honestly doesn't really surprise me too much looking at New Horizons because when I watched the direct, I pretty much was like, huh. This isn't just, like, a good Animal Crossing game. Like, I feel like they're not doing that much new with it. I feel like this is just, like, yeah, this is just a good Animal Crossing game. Like, it's almost like what Smash Ultimate is. And I don't 
when people get mad when I say not a new version of the games. I just mean it's not something different, I guess. You know what I mean? It's just like, here's that game, but here's like a fresh coat of paint and new content for it. But it's not like, here's a whole new idea. Like, we're rechanging Smash. We're rechanging Animal Crossing. Like, there's new stuff in there, but it just seems like a very kind of like safe thing, I guess. But that that's not a bad thing, you know. Nintendo knows their market, and I think it looks great, you know. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's a classic phrase. I'm I'm looking forward to that. Again, I don't think that direct was necessary. They didn't really announce too much stuff that was that interesting in my opinion. It was all kind of like, yeah, we you would think that stuff would happen. Like there wasn't really anything that was like, ooh. Like honestly, the most ooh moment was the thing about you could only transfer your save once, but again, they're even, you know, going back on that. So, uh Hey, I'm looking forward to giving Nook all my money. That's just my life now. So now I get to play my life. Except I'll be on an island and I can get a... What do they call it? Paradise juice or whatever the not... Clearly not mixed drink is. And get crunk on that New Horizons island. Come over here, Isabella. You're looking like a snack. Oh, God. Did I just out myself? I don't like... I'm not a furry, guys. Please, no Isabel furry art. God damn it. That's okay. I don't have a fan base. No one's going to do that. Hey, speaking of not having a fan base, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, no more DLC planned after Second Fighter Pass. The Second Fighter's Pass coming to Smash Ultimate will also be the last bit of DLC to release for the game, according to his director, Masahiro Sakurai. In Sakurai's regular column for Famitsu, he mentions the next six characters in development for the Nintendo Switch's exclusive fighting game will be the last planned DLC updates for it. As Sakurai has already stated, all these characters have already been chosen by Nintendo. Sakurai also mentions that there are currently no plans for another Smash entry, presumably allowing him to work on other projects. Sakurai has been working on non-stop... has been working on non-stop on the series since Smash Bros. for Wii U and Nintendo 3DS. I believe I read that right, or else I'm just dyslexic. Um, Two things. I, I kind of tweeted about what I thought when I saw this earlier in the week. This is kind of old now. Um, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that this is the last DLC pack. I, I'm going to be honest with you guys. The Just the amount of characters that... Mi- Masahiro Sakurai and his team and Nintendo put into this game is incredible. Even if at the end of these six characters you don't get that one you always wanted, it's still a marvel to see all these characters and all the love put into this game. Like it, It's more than anything I could imagine for. So, you know, I'm very content with six more characters coming to the game because I'm going to be honest, even if they ended on Biolith, that would have been like such a bad way to go out, but still... What a fantastic game. It was a great first uh, fighter pass, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing what's in store because I feel like it's going to be very exciting. But they don't need to continue doing this. I think maybe when this is over, they'll think about what the next Smash is. I even consider where they... So I'm going into the next part where he said they're not working on a new entry. I considered that maybe ultimate will just be the smash game for a little bit where maybe they'll just tweak it or add more characters to it so like whenever the new cons nintendo console will come out or whatever success is the switch they'll just pretty much port ultimate and either add more characters or just make it look prettier or add a new mode or something like that and i think that'll kind of be that for the time being Whatever the next Smash thing is. I think that's what the thing will be. Unless they're going to completely reboot the series. Because many times Sakurai has said. Oh we're never going to be able to put all these characters back in again. So if they would make another Smash game. They might scale it back. And there might not be as many characters. So they might completely reboot the series. And do something crazy with it. Maybe make it more like a fighting game. I don't know. I don't know who's to say. Um, My last thought on this is. I think it's really cool that Sakurai is actually going to be working on other projects because he is a very good game director. I adore Kid, Kid Icarus Uprising, excuse me. that He made that on the 3DS. It was a fantastic game. He's made a lot of good Kirby games as well. I'm very excited to see what his next work is going to be because as much as I love Smash and I love Sakurai working on it, 
I'm okay if someone else would work on that and he works on more stuff because he's actually a really good game director. Uh, so that's my two cents on that. You know, I'm excited to see something else. Maybe a new Kid Icarus or Kirby Air Ride sequel. Oh, I'd be so happy. Uh, speaking of children and kids, you know, we've been talking a lot about Nintendo. Seven-year-old Simone Lim wins in Pokemon Pokemon's Oceana Champions. Uh, so, yeah, the, uh, I guess there was a Pokemon tournament. And uh, here, let's let's read a little bit of this article here. In a major upset, seven-year-old Simone Lin, Lim excuse me, won the junior championship division in the Pokemon Oceana International Championships. Hailing from Singapore, Lim beat out last year's winner, an older and more experienced trainer, Justin Morand Rad, Radbor, Radbird. A relative newcomer, Lim is the midst is the midst of her first competitive season, making her victory all the more impressive. Um, then it, it goes into just talking about the actual game and the competitive aspect of it. Um, all I gotta say on this is Pokemon's definitely a kid's game, guys. The, the kid won. What, what else is there to say? It, it's clearly designed for children now. We can all put this to rest, so they're never gonna add the features we want. Case dismissed. Speaking of children... Samurai Jack video game announced for PC, PS4, Xbox, and Switch. Adult Swim Games and Japanese developer Soul Solio Games, I hope I said that right, has announced a brand new video game based on its hit animated series Samurai Jack. IGN has the exclusive first trailer, uh, which you can look uh, watch on IGN. You can look on IGN. Yes, makes sense. Uh, Samurai Jack Battle Through Time is set before Jack's final fight with Aku, an evil entity that trapped Jack in alternate timelines throughout human history. Jack will have to fight through several different timelines in order to reach Aku and defeat him. The script of the Samurai Jack game is written by the series' head writer, Derek Bachman. The gameplay will combine hack-and-slash gameplay and allow players to wield a variety of different melee and ranged weapons. The 3D art style still remain retains the stylized look of Gendi Tara... Tarakovsky's Emmy Award winning animated series, which is a huge plus, plus, excuse me. The developers, Solio Games, are a small studio from Japan compromised of an ex Ninja Gaiden slash Dead or Alive developers, so they have some background in 3D hack and slash games. Uh, so they pretty much nailed what it is. It's a 3D action hack and slash game. It looked pretty cool. Uh, I thought it was very random to see a Samurai Jack game. Especially in the year 2020, it's like what? Uh, but Samurai Jack's dope. I I think this looks cool. Uh, this could have potential. Who knows? It could be pretty neat. Um, and I believe that will be at PAX East. If anyone's still going to PAX East, oh, that's the PAX East is literally like a couple days from today. There are people at PAX East, so there'll be more details about that if you're curious. Speaking of old things. Half-Life fan remake Black Mesa finally hits 1.0 next month. So, for those of you who don't know what Black Mesa is, it is a fan-made remake of the original Half-Life game. And let me this game hit Steam in early access in May on May 2015 and has been in development for an extremely long time as project lead Adam Engels says in the release date announcement he joined the project 14 years ago Jesus Christ for the majority of its development Black Mesa was a volunteer project Engels post said after even after we got the green light to sell the game we still did not make any money until late June of 2015 we think this upcoming 1.0 release is the best most polished and most fun version of the game yet the anticipation and excitement around our project is beyond flattering. The game will continue to receive support and bug fix fixes after its 1.0 release, the post states. So, I just needed to uh, bring this to life because Half-Life is a game series that I love truly and deeply. And I love Black Mesa. I actually played it uh, a while ago. I bought this game years ago and I played whatever content was in there. I don't remember where I got it. I think it's right before you go. Uh, to the other planet. I don't want to give too much more away, but this is a great game. Go go check it out. If you've never played the original Half-Life game, Black. this is called Black Mesa. It's a remake. It's so good. It's so, so good. Uh, real quick, uh, this is a series I'm not too familiar with, but I thought this was neat. 
Streets of Rage 4, new character, online and offline co-op modes announced. The final unknown character for Streets of Rage 4, Floyd Iria, has been announced alongside two ways of playing with others online and offline in the upcoming brawler. Floyd joins the roster of five characters as a cybernetic powerhouse brawler. The official description of his playstyle, as described via an official press release, reads uh, below. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing. This dude literally reminds me of Cyborg. He's a little more Samoan, though. He's got a little bit of, like, uh, Maui from Moana. Like, kind of like Cyborg and Maui had, like, a baby. He looks dope. Um, the way, Oh, here. Publisher Dot, Dotmu also showcased how com- cooperative play works with two-player online and four-player offline offline modes. God, I can't speak today. What is wrong with me? I, I can't speak any day, though. Um, this looks cool. I, I'm very curious about Streets of Rage 4. I've never played any of the Streets of Rage games, but I think this one looks really cool. I love the style. I'm not generally a fan of beat-em-ups, but I, I'm kind of willing to give this a try, and I think it's cool that it's uh, two-player online and four-player offline co-op. That's neat. Okay, so we have a bunch of new details. Well, not really a bunch, but we have some details on the Xbox Series X. Uh, there were new features announced for it. Let's read them. Xbox Series X new smart delivery feature unveiled. As part of a bundle of new details about the upcoming Xbox Series X, Microsoft has unveiled a brand new feature called Smart Delivery. The feature is designed to make sure that players are downloading the version of the game that corresponds to their Xbox in order to have the best possible experience. Microsoft says that it's committed to using this feature on all of its first-party games, including the upcoming Halo Infinite, which is also coming to Game Pass. This means that players will only have to purchase a given game once in order to play what Microsoft terms the best available version. For the Xbox console, they choose to play on even if the upgrade to newer hardware later. Smart delivery will be available for all developers and publishers on the Xbox platform. The technology is intended for games that will release on Xbox One first and come to the upcoming Xbox Series X later. It's unclear if publishers will have the option to decline to use smart delivery in lieu of selling two different copies of the same game for the Xbox One and Xbox Series X, CD Projekt Red has announced has already announced that it will use smart delivery for their uh, for their Holty Holty Holt Hotly. Why I messed up on Hotly <laughs> anticipated Cyberpunk 2077, which I'll see. We'll see if other publishers follow suit. Um. Let me read this again. So I'm not really clear. A new feature called Smart Delivery. This feature is designed to make sure that players are downloading the version of the game that corresponds to their Xbox in order to have the best possible experience. So I guess it's essentially like if you just buy... You buy it once and it can work on either platform. I thought the Xbox Series X was going to have backwards compatibility. So that's what kind of makes me scratch my head here. Like, is it just saying that it's going to be in a better version of it? I guess I don't even know if that's really a new feature. I think I might just be confused on what this feature is, but to me, it just sounds like backwards, backwards compatibility. Um, and just like upscaled. I don't know. Or it's essentially like, Oh, you'll just get a version of the game on, you'll get the better. Ver- I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of a weird feature. Uh, speaking of backwards compatibility, Xbox Series X supports backwards compatibility for every previous Xbox generation. Not too much to go on that, other than yes, that's uh, that should be a thing. That's that's a good, that's a big good. All right, we talked about Nintendo. We talked about Microsoft. Of course, now we have to talk about Sony and the PS5. PS5 website opens, promises details on release date and price are coming soon. Yeah, yeah, I, I, we all know it's coming soon. Where is it, Sony? Are you going to announce like a some sort of uh, live stream and show off the damn box and how much it's going to cost? <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, how has this not been announced yet? God, you guys. Uh, here's some more PS5 new. PS5 could collect your bio feedback via optional DualShock 5 attachment. Sony has filed for another patent, this time for an accessory that can attach the PlayStation DualShock controller and sense the player's biometrics such as heart rate or even sweat. In an application filed by Sony Interactive Entertainment Europe over the weekend, the company is looking to patent a biofeedback sensor attachment for a controller that would compromise one or more sensors to obtaining biofeedback 
feedback information arranged such that at least one sensor is in contact with the user's hand during normal use of the controller. In a patent application here, there's a link to it on this IGN article, Sony is exploring a controller accessory that can collect, select biofeedback from players specifically, heart rate measurements and electro... 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 Ten, electro tender electro thermal electro thermal activity aka sweat uh thank you ign or whoever wrote this article for making me look like a fool now nah, that's i i look like a fool every day um hey uh that's that's pretty weird that's pretty w- weird right i mean why who needs this in a controller so you know like i don't really see what's the point of this like honestly i i don't know like i guess i shouldn't be a pessimist and just be like oh you guys are, you have an idea like just throw it away like what's the point of that there must be something useful for this like horror gate i don't i don't know i don't really see it it's just weird it just makes me think i don't know if the article talks about this but the vitality sensor that they were making for the wii which could measure your heart rate i i, I don't see a, a point for this other than they want your I don't, I don't like the word biofeedback. That makes me uneasy. It feels like I'm in a scary 80s sci-fi horror movie. I don't like it. As we wrap up the news here, we have a bunch of companies pulling out of these recent conventions due to the coronavirus. So Sony cancels PAX East Showcase over coronavirus concerns, cuts Last of Us 2 demos, Sony also cancels GDC plans over coronavirus concerns. Besides Sony, Hideo Kojima Productions pulls out of GDC citing coronavirus concerns. EA is dropping out of GDC 2020 due to the coronavirus. Uh, what do we have here? Capcom, there are some changes. Uh, w- hang on, let me read this. I-, I believe they won't be at PAX East. Yes, there we go. I've read it. Uh, Square Enix will not be, or will scale back some of their Final Fantasy fourteen stuff at PAX East. Uh, and then, uh, sadly, the Sonic movie is delayed in China due to the coronavirus. So, uh, a lot of big sad delays going around because of this horrible, horrible thing that's happening in the world. It's quite sad. Uh, I mean, you hate to see all these companies pull out, but at the same time, like, can you even really blame them? It's a bio international threat, you know. You de- you definitely don't want anyone to die or, you know, even just get sick. Like it's scary. Um, and he, you know, hopefully, somewhere in the world, this is being addressed, and they're trying to find a cure for this. It, I mean, it really sucks. But at the end of the day, people's health and well being is more important than hey, just what video new video game come out, what new thing on the glowy screen. You know, they can put out new information online where people can be safe in their uh, homes or their their workspaces. You know, I I completely understand why people wouldn't want to travel in this time. But it does make you kind of question and think, uh, what other events might get canceled this year due to the coronavirus still being a thing? Hopefully this will all be situated by maybe the warmer, well, the you know, maybe in May or June. I was going to say the warmer time in the United States, but, you know, it's an international threat, so I guess that really doesn't matter. Um, but, yeah, the, very, very sad to see all that, but very understandable. It's a scary times out there. Please wash your hands and be very conscious about what you eat. You know, if you're sick, just stay home. Stay away from people. Uh, everyone should try to stay, you know, just... Treat it like any other flu. Don't get too scared about it. I mean, if you want to buy supplies, you can. Face masks, gloves. But uh, just just treat it like any other flu. Try not to, like, worry yourself too much. You know, it. they'll eventually find a cure or something for it. it it'll be figured out. Don't worry. Um, That's pretty much all the news, though. A little somber note there. But, you know, sometimes it happens in the weeks. Um, like I said, I didn't really, I don't really have too much here to talk about with what I played and watched this week. I haven't really been reading my one book. Um, 
I, I go back and forth. Sometimes I, I want to read a chapter. Sometimes I don't. I, I don't know what to say. It's interesting, um, but yeah, it, it just depends on how I feel that day, I guess. Um, so yeah, what I've been watching is I, I again, I slightly continued with No Game, No Life. I watched one more episode. Um, I forget what happened in that episode. I think they were like, well, I don't want to go into it in case people want to watch it, but I'm liking it. The more I keep watching it, I'm liking it. I just, I'm kind of getting over the fact that it was like, it's very, it has a lot of, um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a clever way to say it, but just like boobs and cleavage and butts, you know, it's very, uh, oh my God, I, I'm literally blanking on the word right now, but yes, over the top and fan service, that was the word I was looking for. Um, so I, I usually tended to stay away from those kind of animes because I just feel like the developers are, or not the developers, the creators are trying to market their characters for, you know, merchandise, whether it be figures or the Dakimaru or whatever. Um, but this is actually a good show. It has a good story and I do appreciate that. And I was even thinking, you know, I like Game of Thrones and Game of Thrones surely does show a lot of ass and tits and dicks. So, you know, is it really that bad? And it, it's not at the end of the day. So I'm trying to just have a different mindset. I forget if I talked about that or not on these podcasts, but yeah, um, I, I definitely want to finish that. I don't know why I didn't end up watching more of it. I, I forget honestly. Um, I tried to watch some more of Game of Thrones, but the Plex server that I have all the seasons on, it, it was down. I think my buddy was doing maintenance or something on it, so I couldn't really get into watching any more of that. So I, I hopefully will continue more of that, but I don't know. You know, it's looking... We'll see what happens. I, I do want to continue it. I really like the show. and I literally only had two more episodes of season one, but... We'll see. I, it's also like I kind of enjoyed watching it with my girlfriend. And uh, she's been... We've been kind of on separate uh, schedules right now. So, yeah. I I don't know. And I, I like I said, I got a lot on my mind. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with my time. Whether that be play games or watch stuff, you know. We're all busy adults. We all have limited amount of hours in the day. And I choose to make a terrible podcast. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, you know. One day I'll, I'll get back to watching more of it. Uh, I actually started watching Good Eats Reloaded uh, the other day. This is on Hulu. So just real quick, if no one knows what Good Eats is, it's this food show on the Food Network hosted by this uh, chef called Alton Brown. And he essentially would break down the methodology, methodology of a specific dish. So there was an episode about fish and chips. There was an episode just about like buttermilk biscuits. And he goes through all the scientific facts about like what to do with each ingredient, the proper way to make them. And with this series reloaded, Good Eats originally aired in like the early 2000s. So this is, this came out like two years ago and it's current Alton Brown, like kind of going back and talking about things he learned now and correcting himself in funny ways. It, it's a great show. It's not a very serious show, but I like cooking shows and I'm enjoying it. I also started watching Always Sunny in Philadelphia season 14. So this is a show that me and my girlfriend absolutely love. We have binged the whole series multiple times. It's fantastic. And for some reason, it always takes Hulu forever to put the latest season on there. So we had to outsource ourselves and find another way to watch it. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And uh, we started watching it, and it's great. It's really funny. It's it's very odd, though, to see season 14 now, because you can definitely tell all the actors are starting to age, and it's kind of weird seeing that. But at the same time, I don't know. It's like, yeah, that happens. Um, but I like it a lot. It, it's really funny. There's there's good moments in that new season. But it, it's, I mean, I don't know. It's not as good as some of the earlier seasons, but it's still pretty funny. I enjoy watching it. It's like a throwaway, not that serious show. I I still like the gang. They're all funny. Um, I played a tiny, tiny bit of Smash Ultimate. Uh, like I kind of mentioned earlier, I want to get back into it, though. I want to start practicing and actually try to go to tournaments. I feel like I say that every week on this podcast, but I do want to do that. Um, I, I did watch a ton of Frostbite 2020. That shit was great. 
I feel like sometimes I just enjoy watching Smash more than I enjoy playing it. Sometimes I don't know. Uh, although sometimes I feel like the t- the like finals can get a little stale because especially at big major events like this, it's always the same people. And it's like, yeah, I can watch some Tweak, I can watch some Nairo, I can watch MK Leo and Sam Sora, and they're all like really good. But at the end of the day, they all kind of like just do the same stuff, and they don't really change their characters either. I get more hype when I see like a, a new face in the like top sixteen or top eight, and I'm like, yo, there's a young link player. Go toast. I like that kind of stuff. Um, I played a bit more Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I I actually played a, a good bit of that. I I still just enjoy it. Playing that game right now, going through completing the challenges, just working my way through the battle pass. I'm really close to unlocking that new SMG. And I just, yeah, I like leveling up my guns and just, I don't know. It's it's a simple game, but it's what I'm enjoying right now a lot. I, I'm really digging it. I I don't really have much more to say on it because at the end of the day, it is just Call of Duty. It's just a, a good, really good Call of Duty. Um, and yeah, it, it's fun. I, I like it. I don't. I don't know. I'm a, I like military shooters. What can I say? I do have a bit, though, to talk about a new game this week. I played The Swords of Ditto. So I forget what day I started this. It might have been Saturday. And I was just kind of like like zoning out. And I was like, I kind of want something new to play. <laughs> you know, it was ironic because I was just watching a video on Diablo 4 before I did this podcast. And I'm like, huh, I really should keep playing Diablo 3. That game's hella fun. I don't know why I didn't play that, but I, I started, I looked through all the games I have on my Switch, and there are a a decent amount of indie games I have on there that I just have not touched, that I bought, that they were either on sale, or I'm like, I, I want to get this game now. And I saw the Swords of Ditto, and I'm like, I I really would like to play this right now. This seems like something I'd really enjoy. So the Swords of Ditto is a classic Zelda-like game, like it's top-down, and you control this character, and you get different toys throughout the world, which are essentially your items. And it seems like it's a roguelike because you're put on a timer, and essentially, I believe every time you die, a new uh, sword will come back, as they call it, or pawn, I forget what they're called. Um, but you go around the world, you defeat monsters, you have like a sword and basic like three hit combo, and then you also have your toys, which are essentially the items like a bow and a boomerang and bombs and stuff like that. Um, and the main plot of the game is that this like dung beetle, this ancient dung beetle ghost wakes you up and is like, yo, you got to help save the day. And you're like, all right. And you uh, go follow him, defeating some monsters, getting the sword and whatnot. And then you fight this uh, this bad witch girl lady. Uh, her name is like Mordo or Mormo. I forget her name. But she essentially like one hits you and then a hundred years pass. And then a new sword is woken up and the dung beetle wakes you up again. And he's she's all like, hey, go get the sword. Come on, we got to do this. And that's essentially the gist. Like I think every time your sword dies, a hundred years pass and then a new sword comes And I don't know if the game gets harder with that, but it seems like more of the overworld stuff might change. I don't know. It might stay the same, though, because there's like a you have like a house. You have a a hub town with all different like little shops in there. Um, I I really didn't play too much of this game thinking about it. Maybe only put like three to five hours into it. And I didn't really see too much variation. It was a lot of exploring the overworld. And there were some like hidden dungeons that you would need a specific toy or item to get to. And uh, most of the dungeons I went in were just very small, like three or four rooms. And then you got a chest which had a sticker in, which I didn't explain stickers. That stickers are essentially just buffs. You get one for your weapon, one for your armor, your helmet, and your arm. And they all do like slightly different things. Like some will just increase your defense, some will just increase your attack, some do like specific things like increase your knockback or increase your luck or maybe uh, instead of taking damage you lose money, something like that. There, There's weird, unique ones. Um, so yeah, like the gameplay feels good. There's like a role, you know, there's everything you can expect from an old Zelda game, but it just seemed a little repetitive. I didn't really seem too much variation besides the toys. I don't know how many toys there are in the game. It seems like there might be quite a few, but a little, little early to say. I didn't see any... 
I don't think you get a different weapon or anything like that. It seems like the sword is pretty set in stone. You do get different moves. Like, eventually, you get experience from killing all the enemies, and I did level up, and I got, like, a... Like, a... Uh, you have, like, a dodge roll, and then you can do, like, a lunging, like, slash out of it if you hold the attack button. So that's pretty neat. And I think you get, like, other special moves like that. Like, I think you'll get, like, a, a classic, like, spin attack that you hold the attack button and other things like that so it seems pretty interesting i guess but i don't know like it didn't seem like it had too much depth i love i love the look of the game it looks like a cow arts cartoon if you're not familiar what that means it's like steven universe uh the amazing world of gumball uh gravity falls you name it like that very simple but kind of aesthetic looking art again if you don't love that you're probably not gonna like the game but i, I think the game looks really really nice the art style is one of the reasons I really wanted to get this game. It's very smooth and beautiful. A lot of colors, a lot of good like animation on each of the different characters. Uh, there really, there really wasn't any like bosses in the game, which was kind of sad. Like at the end of the, some of these major dungeons where you would get a new toy, the boss ended up just being a fallen sword, and all it would be is just an evil version of you, but with like maybe a different look or a different type of character. But they just have, like, the same kind of... They might have, like, a random, like, toy on them that they'll use or two or three. So that was kind of disappointing. Like, I was hoping that the game might have, like, a bunch of unique bosses like Legend of Zelda where it's like, oh, you need this certain toy to defeat it or something like that. But that might get a little too hairy considering you might not get every toy in your run because you do have a time limit. Each of your lives, you only have a certain amount of time and eventually you have to go fight Mordo or whatever her name is. And I was about to fight her. I was in the last dungeon to fight her. And uh, that's where I stopped because my game actually crashed. And I don't think it erased my data because this game's constantly saving. But I, I forget why I didn't go back and start playing it and just see what happens after you beat her once. Because I think the game keeps continuing. I don't think it's a short game. I think it is like a roguelike. But yeah, I just... I, I got the weirdest crash I've ever seen in a game where I like rolled off a ledge and I think I got hit by an enemy and literally the error code that came up on my switch was like, it's just like a uh, code from like the game program. Like it said like all the different lines and had brackets and all the, I I'm familiar with coding. So I was just like, huh, this is one of the most unusual bugs I've ever seen. Like just literally a window with all this code and it's saying error and stuff like that. I'm like that. That's very bizarre. I've actually had two uh, bugs playing this game, that being one of them. And the other one is, since it's a classic Zelda-like game, you'll go to an edge of a, some of the map, and then it will scroll to a different part of the map with a loading screen. I actually got stuck after I transitioned, where I didn't move, and I got hit by an enemy. And I think he pushed me back enough that it was it thought that I was going to the other screen. So I literally just couldn't move. Luckily, though, since the game is constantly saving... I was able to just load and be like, oh, hey, I'm right back in that uh, room I was in, and I had all the stuff I had. So it wasn't a big deal, but I'm just saying I got two bugs, and they were both pretty outrageous. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt, but the the game seems pretty fun. I really like it. I plan on playing that game more and seeing what it has to offer. I really, I really enjoy it for what it is. I... I'm trying to remember the music. I think it had some good music, but I don't know. It maybe it wasn't noticeable. I don't really remember. Uh, but that's going to do it for the podcast this week. Another one bites the dust. Do 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 do. Another one bites the dust. Am I going to get pulled off of Spotify? Probably not. Ooh, ooh. Oh my God. <sighs> what? I don't, I don't know if doing these solo is a good thing or a bad thing. I feel like my energy, I don't know though, I feel like this happens when I do a normal podcast. I don't know if it's just me talking so much and like maybe I'm just getting out of breath. Because I'm going to be honest with you guys, I don't really talk a lot like day to day. I'm generally a pretty quiet guy. So I don't, like I, and I, I only get upset that I'm like tired because I want to give you guys the best podcast ever. I want to be hype very energetic and positive and funny and I have had podcasts where I'm like that but I feel like recently like when I do these things I'm like very like tired and like uh whatever 
you know, and I, I don't want to be like that. I want to give you guys a, a great podcast to come back to. So uh, please forgive me as I try to get through this and get situated. Um, thank you all for listening, though. Hey, if you ever have a question you want to ask this son of a bitch game, bro, Corey, you can do so by sending me an email at levelwithmepodcast at gmail.com. That's levelwithmepodcast at gmail.com. You can send me any sort of question. I eventually want to read some of your questions on the podcast in the future. It can be about anything. It doesn't have to be gaming related. I feel like that could be funny. Could be, maybe. I don't know. Am I funny? No. No. Uh, Hey, I'm sending out the virtual handshake to you. Thank you for listening to the Level With Me podcast. And please go check out my social links, which I didn't even mention. Uh, that's uh, Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram if you want to give me a follow. Uh, again, I I don't know what my content is going to be in the future, so go ahead. If you want to give me a follow, give me a follow. <laughs> oh, man. That's the worst self-promotion. You can if you want. I don't care. <laughs> um, but yeah, Twitch, uh, probably Smash or uh, Modern Warfare as well be streaming it in the future. Twitter, you can see me share a lot of cool shit or share my opinions on something. Um, uh, t- Instagram, I post a bunch of food pics. Uh, YouTube, post the podcast. Eventually, we'll start posting the scripted show as we get there one day. Uh, and uh, yeah, I guess that'll that'll wrap it up. Have a great week, bros. Peace. Make sure you get that Trojan Magnum Dong XXXL. I have three X's in there because that means the porns, right? I, I think that's what that meant. I where did that originate? What what is XXX? Why does that stand for porn? Why didn't it just say like boob or I don't know, <laughs> vagina? I, oh boy, let's get out of here.